here at grounds. So pigeons they only tend to have about a four day shelf life, they don't really last too long around these parts. So very nice to see one of those leave the arena intact. Anyways, with Chaucer, you will see this bird now in a completely different posture. In fact, when this bird's flying around, we very rarely see any other wildlife, and that's because with falcons, that long point of wing shape to other birds usually spells impending doom. They try and seek cover, they get into the trees, rather than directly binding into it, so they just like to clip it with their really long toes. Now the posture you can see here, it's known as mantling. In fact, the word mantle, I mean, some of you might be lucky enough to have a mantle piece in your household. It usually means it shrouds and shrouds and protects a fireplace. And what birds of prey do is they use their wings to heavily mantle over the top of their quarry. Now, if you see things like, say, a sparrow hawk, they will completely eviscerate a blue tit in your garden. They do this because they don't want you to come and steal it. And that's what Chaucer's doing now. He's making sure none of you head on down there and steal his tasty piece of chicken. Hopefully none of you will. We've just had our lunch break and there's a lovely restaurant down the bottom part of the ground. So I think we'll leave Chaucer to do what he wants to do. But with this little falcon, it's all about giving him a bit of time, a bit of patience to enjoy his meal and do what he wants to do. Because he's just worked his socks off. Sometimes with falcons, it can take a few minutes before they start eating that food. And that's because he's just really, really worked. He's flown in excess of over 80 miles an hour from time to time there. Could you imagine running the London Marathon and as soon as you've finished, someone goes right here, eat that roast dinner. It's not going to sit very well, is it? So you're going to have to bide your time. Tubes in their nares, as we refer to them as on Birds of Prey. That's what filters the airflow so he doesn't come back as a little ball of feathers. He's just a stupid missile. Okay, now Simon's going to introduce a, another piece of food to Chaucer. So once he's had a few mouthfuls, Chaucer will hopefully see that bit of food and think, you know what, that looks quite tasty, and hop back over to Simon. And not anyone can just pick up Chaucer and go and fly him. You need to earn his respect, you need to gain his trust. So he only flies out of a team of 14 of us for about four or five different members of staff, this Falcon. So they do judge you based on your appearance, believe it or not. So birds of prey are very judgmental creatures. If they don't like you... They don't like you, it's as simple as that. Now, Lana falcons, they are a migratory bird of prey, so you will mainly find them trying to catch swifts and swallows. That's their favourite target, so they will migrate from Africa to Europe in search of those birds. So they can travel extreme distances. We don't find them living here in the UK. We do have four native falcons, however. We have the iconic peregrine falcon, kestrels I'm sure some of you are familiar with, we also get hobbies and merlins, which are even smaller and even lighter. Now Chaucer is back up on Simon's fist there. We'll bring him a little bit closer so you can see him in all of his beauty. He's a very good looking little bird. So they're about a third smaller than the peregrine falcon that we find them in here in the UK. They're a very close relative, mind you. But they have this amazing little red patch of feathers running down the back of their head. We refer to this as the naked feathers on a bird of prey. So he's a really vibrant looking little individual. And often on lana falcons, on their breast and their kill bone, straight down the middle, they often have a little love heart speckled pattern, which I think is really quite dainty on these birds. But that was an amazing performance today, so a big thank you to Simon and a big thank you to James, wherever he's headed off to, so that was really, really cool. They're going to head off behind the scenes, and all chores we'll need to do for the rest of the day is enjoy his meal, and we actually have to rein that in a little bit. And that's because our eagles, the blunt way to put it is, they've stopped coming home. And the reason why they've done this is because red kites and buzzards, they've started to repopulate and started to breed quite heavily. In fact, we believe three buzzards have actually just fledged their nest and left within the last week, just over on the right-hand side in that tree line. 